Hello and welcome to another episode of Supercoach Insider. My name is Ben. And I'm Chris. And thank you for joining us for our team-by-team -team analysis on Richmond, Chris. Yeah, the uh, the premieres even, I would say. Um, Richmond, obviously, great team. Good to watch. They've got a lot of things going for them and I wish they would just start losing. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> But one thing that is going against them, which also kind of goes against the Port Adelaide team, and we've spoken about this a little bit, they are such a team-orientated game style that there's not too many premiums that stand out. They don't have too many top 10s, which means they're kind of painful for standard because you know they're, they're not really shining out as all these great options. And they're also kind of painful for draft leagues, as in... You know, they're, they're kind of a lot of it in the middle, Chris. They're very consistent team players. Yeah, and they've, this has been a few years. It's the way that they play. They have multi-positional players that play different roles. Um, and it's definitely sort of the way that they're set up. It's, you know, one in, one out. Um, you know, they all play this, the, the, the buy into the system. And um, there's very few players on that team that have really defined, this is your only role. Like someone like a Dion Prestia, you're a midfielder. That's all you do. Yeah. Um. Everyone else is very scattered in terms of their flexibility. So yeah, mind you, it is you do want a team like this and like Port no, Adelaide it's, because it's a good thing. Yeah. It's good, but as far as super coach, it's not the uh, friendliest thing for those playing at home. But before we move on, Chris, let's hit them with our socials. We yep. are obviously Super Coach Insider. You can find us SC Insider One Hundred. We are on Twitter, Facebook. You can look us up on Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, Stitcher, uh, was what else have we got there, Chris? I, uh, what have we got? Google Podcast, iTunes, Radio, etc. Yeah, uh, and of course, YouTube. on YouTube. There it is. Search for a Super Coach Insider on YouTube, and please do keep up with all the comments. We love interacting with you all. And uh, I actually had a little touching story the other day, Chris. Someone had um, someone who, who messaged through had a bit of a tough year last year, and thanked us for you know kind of doing a little part to help them get through. And it has been a challenging year. Obviously, we kind of disappeared at the end of last year, but hey, look, we are back and loving life, and I hope you enjoy what we're bringing you so far. Yeah, I mean, that had nothing to do with touching, but um, cool. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> when you said touching story, I thought you were going to go on a tangent. <laughs> no, y'all don't say that. Jeez. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's get straight into the rookies, guys, because there really isn't much. So this is going to be the shortest rookie um, area in the history of, of rookie areas for our podcast, um, they only got the two um, two draft picks in and they didn't even get in until pick 40. Um, so they went with a Samson Ryan and at 51, they had a academy pick in uh, Maurice Rioli Jr. So I'm just going to go through Samson. He's actually a uh, ruckman that's been drafted in. He played in the Quaffle last year for Sherwood. So he's a mature age guy, he's 21 um, he's still a project ruckman, but they've really got in at a, an overage for a guy because their ruck's taken obviously a bit of depth, a uh, hit hit to their depth. So with um, uh, Soldo out for pretty much most of the season with that ACL, um, they've also had Callum Coleman Jones, who's actually still injured as well. So they wanted to get someone in that if like pin, you know push comes to shove and they get a couple more injuries, they've at least got someone that can play to the level whose body is AFL ready. He's 206 centimetres and 97 kilos. So he's ready to go if needed, but I wouldn't. Ex they, they don't expect him to play. He's there for a backup. So No meatloaf needed there. No meatloaf, definitely not. Um, and the other one, of course, as you, as well known, Maurice Rioli Jr. Um, obviously, uh, he actually could go to three clubs um, uh, as part of um, Father, Son and all, all those sort of um, different things. Um, he ended up going with Richmond, obviously, uh, a Rioli at Richmond, who would have thunk it. Um, he's 173 centimetres and 73 kilos. Um, so very small, um, but he's hey, <laughs> he definitely needs that meatloaf. Uh, he's obviously very, very quick, very agile, huge tackling, defensive pressure style, small forward. It's his perfect. It fits the Richmond system. It's exactly what they would go for. Um, 20 meter sprint speed of 2.98 um, uh, seconds. Um, and he's obviously got that X factor. Um, small indigenous forward that's absolutely lightning. So, yeah, really, really um, excited to see him play, but it won't be for a while. Write that down. <laughs> You're welcome. That's it. That's that's all the rookies. Um, so, I'm sorry, but that is literally it. In terms of guys that can come in and make an impact this year, Callum Coleman-Jones, if he does get back from injuries, only 160K. 
That's one I'd be looking at. RCD? Uh, what about yep, RCD? Riley yep. Collier-Dawkins. Yes. Um, I have him currently on my list. So, a guy that um, hopefully was going to play last year, didn't end up getting a game. And we've spoken about the guys that have been in the, in the list for a couple of years. Um, they've been able to train as an AFL player. And so, they're a little bit further ahead of guys that were drafted this year. Whether or not he gets a game is purely based on if they, they just decide, yep, we'll throw you in. Because that with the system that Richmond have, they could just plug him in round one. Well, they could if he stopped going out down the Gold Coast. That's That'd be much better. Now, <laughs> apparently he's having a great season because St- uh, Stack is stuck all the way in Western Australia. So <laughs> maybe it's done him done him some good. The world of good. And look, not, they've had... Um, not, for, not for Stack, obviously, poor guy. Yeah, obviously they've had a bit of list change. They've, they actually delisted Derek Egmerly smith which I was shocked with. So they must They just been... got sick of trying to pronounce his name, Chris. Yeah, That's right. why they got rid of him. They delisted Luke English. They um, obviously traded Jack Higgins over to St Kilda. Um, Oleg Markov obviously went over to Gold Coast. And uh, Alex Rands retired. And then Fraser Turner also was delisted. So there's a little bit there in terms of that there's a spot for RCD if he wants it. He's not best 22, but the way that um, Hardwick you know, plays his rookies is that he just he'll just get them. He'll go, yep, you're in for six games. He'll just give them the, the, the game time. So... And they do rotate fairly frequently. And so Richmond, there's a chance. Richmond have been notorious for injuries as well the last few years. That, absolutely. Um, yep. now, and still winning. Yeah. and that's But, but the, their depth is huge. Like you look at – and this is why the difference between the top teams and the bottom teams is that you go through their 22 to 25 and they're still very serviceable players. Plus they've got youth coming through. And then you get Essendon's depth. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, that, so that's the point we're making. We're not being harsh, but as in if Essendon do lose a lot of players yeah, to injury, absolutely. they are screwed. All right. So uh, from the back line, uh, in terms of their best 22 that I've got here, I've got Grimes, Asprey, Vlosten, uh, Short, the, the Goat, Bolter, and then Baker on the half back line. I've gone with McIntosh, Edwards, and Pickett um, on the wing. Half forward line, Lambert, Rewalt, and Martin, of course. Uh, and then uh, Castagna, Lynch, and Bolton. So Bolton will obviously still play uh, some mid-minutes, but he'll start out of pocket. In the ruck, Nank, because obviously Soldo is injured and will not be coming back for a long time. Cochin and Prestia. And on the bench, I've got Graham, Rioli, Broad, and Hooley. Um, now, Hooley's uh, injured as well, I believe. I don't think he's going to be back early. Uh, yeah, he blew his calf in the grand final, so he's been working his way back, yep. um, and that was earlier in this year, so I doubt he's just ready yet. So that's where the spot opens up right now for RCD, but they, I mean, l- look at this depth. So this, that, that's not including Caddy. They've still got Stack. They've got Ross, Nash, Arts, who was actually a very good best 22 player last year. Yep. Then we've got Callum Coleman-Jones as well, and, of course, RCD. Scholl, who's been in and out of the side uh, fit with injury, and Garthwaite, that's also been in and out of the side due to injury. So they've just got players that can cover yep. every aspect. Um, it's one of their very big strengths. But I do see an opportunity, and potentially even round one for RCD. So definitely keep an eye on him in the preseason. He's one that can definitely play. Yeah, it's funny. See, for me, I actually think that... Um yeah, Hooley, yes, I think Hooley will still definitely be playing. But when you're looking at Cochin, I actually think Cochin is at the age where full season, full tilt inside, I think he's going to be pinching in the middle more and probably finding a different role some part through Potentially. the season. I don't know. That's just. It's Sometimes got, it's been forced inside because you know, you've had injuries to keep us or, or they need someone to lift them, and he's their kind of go to. But for yep. me, I, I, I don't know. Just gut feeling is, is that Cochin's just getting a little bit slower. And he's still a great decision maker, but when you look at, you know, that's why I think uh, Bolton, et cetera, have been in there probably more likely. I still think that, yeah, there is room for someone else to go into that midfield mix. Yeah, yeah, potentially. And that could be RCD, definitely. Um, So, look, I suppose we get into the premiums, and like we already alluded to, there really isn't many premiums worth talking about, but obviously the key one there is Dusty Martin. Yes. Um, so he's a forward again, so that, that, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but he's only only averaged 100, and look, that's pretty good. Like, I know it's not amazing, but the fact that he's done it so consistently over however long that Dusty's been, been going at it, he's reliable, he plays games, he does everything you want, he's good to watch. Um, he can go big, but he can have a 60 in it. 
as well. Yeah, but that's like a, any kind of forward, really. He's played 166 out of 171 games the last eight year. Yep. Now, people are saying like, oh, the Brownlow year, he, he absolutely you know killed it. So I'm going to take out. So obviously, obviously over the six-year period, including his Brownlow, I'm getting rid of the Brownlow, Chris. Now, over that five-year period that excludes his Brownlow year, he still averages 103.6 over that period. That's insane. Right? He's still a very good option, and that's excluding when he nearly averaged 120. He is still a very good player. He still plays nearly every single game. And he's running PBs. And he's running – well, he beat the forwards. I mean, come on. I mean, trying to beat Tom Lynch is no mean feat. So (laughs) um, I still think he's a great option, and he has been in my side a little bit. Now, the problem is, is again, he probably doesn't have the hurt factor as much of late, but he's someone who could – when he wants to pull it out, average you 105 to 108 quite convincingly. Yeah. I There's no way that I would see Dustin aside and say, you're making a mistake. The only reason why he's not currently in my side is because Dusty always drops cash. And he's 541k. And I can guarantee you I'll pick him up somewhere between 450 and 500 in six, seven weeks. No. Nah. 450. No, 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 no. Yep. He's he's basically basement price at 540. He might no drop way. he might drop to like he's four. He's only averaging 100, mate. He might drop to like 475 480. He's not that's, going to 450. That's what I said. He's somewhere 450. between 450 to 500k. Yeah, but not 450. I mean, that's a large stretch. It is a stretch. Um no, that's he's definitely possible to do that. He'll bottom out somewhere. Now, so this year just gone, he played... He loves a 60 in his score for for no reason. He played 16 games. He had 700s, though, which is why it hasn't been as great for him in 2020. Uh, he had a 126, 147, and a 184. So he still had a few big games in there, which really inflated that average up. Did get tagged by Conker on a 60, uh, so 54, I think it was. He got tagged by Conker, and he also had a 66 in there as well. He's so, definitely the one that gets tagged in that midfield. Yes, I do agree. And uh, but again, with you know looking at Cochin and these other guys, I still think Dusty needs to play more midfield time than he's been given. And he's he's great. He won't this year. He's great in the forward line, but he'll be spending more time forward. I don't see it though. You because have the Rewalt. rotations and style like that. He's the guy. Oh, he that's will rest. Bear forward. Yeah, he will rest. Absolutely. But he his game his time on ground. Right. So in twenty nineteen, he played like eighty three percent time on ground. I could see him playing more ninety percent time on ground this year. Yeah, and he'll be spending more time forward. That's what I'm saying. No, still a lot of midfield time, but then resting forward and then straight back in the guts. So I think that 90% time on ground, I see him definitely getting a, a huge smash in that midfield, rest forward, play with some one-on-one, get those other guys up while he rests and try and kick some goals at the same time. Well, do you think that he can increase his average or do you think that increase. he'll just maintain? No, I think he increases. I okay, think so he goes what, what does he go? 105. Okay, is that... Is it it's worth not it? Huge. At five, five? I mean, it's uh, not. Like, it's 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 a fifty fifty. Here is what it is. I reckon you you if you are looking at um at still side bottom, you could save your fifty k no. and get Dustin Martin. Oh, I would go Dusty over still side bottom one hundred percent because I think they'll probably average similar. Nope. Yeah, Dusty is going to absolutely wipe the floor with side oh. bottom. I would take that bet easily. Any money, any day, any bet. I wouldn't bet against it, but no. like. Like I'm not taking the over under on it, but um, I think for 50k more in your bank, I reckon Dusty's a much better pick. Now, um, so what's that worth? Five points? I reckon Dusty goes five points more. Ti- yeah, Tigers are, are have that the is. middle buy, so that's a consideration. So it's not exactly optimal, but it's not bad. Um, I like Mark Dusty as a pick. I think it's I think it's a good pick. I, th- I think yep. you can't really go wrong. Um, as far as I mean, the four premiums are shit. Oh, so that you know, yes and no. Well, He's probably one of the safest. Yeah, uh, along with Dangerfield, except Dusty hasn't had a, a shit preseason. So absolutely, um, I do like him for that reason. And and here's the thing though: is that for me, Marshall is in a lot of sides and warranted. He has forward ruck eligibility. But who do you think has the better chance of averaging a hundred between Martin and Marshall? Marshall to go a hundred. Yep. Yeah. See, I think just it's, roll. Yeah. It's because with the ruck time, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, Dustin sometimes sometimes he just gets lost, or there'll be games where he gets all the CBAs and then goes forward, but then doesn't impact the game forward, or he gets tagged. Like again, Marshall's not getting tagged. Marshall runs around literally no one on him half a game. It's ridiculous, and he's just like floating behind the pack, taking an intercept grab, or when he's in the ruck, he's not getting tagged. Yeah, like I, I really like. Okay, so. Let's say that they are. The, I think they're similar price. There might be ten. Well, him and, K and, them. and Dunkley, which is like, we're going to throw this into a three-way debate now. 
I have had Dusty Martin in my side, and it looks it looks serviceable. It looks good. It looks like you know they're going to be fairly consistent, and I'm happy that he has the last buy, and it looks like he's going to play every round, averaging me 100 to 105, and I'm happy with that. Yep, but then you're look, getting what you pay for. But then I'll look at Dunkley, right? Now, Dunkley might not go as high, but he sure as hell has a better ceiling, he has better scope, and he has more hurt factor based on recent performances. Um, it's yeah, a, it's a hard one. It's riskier. It's more risky go, to go Dunkley over, over Dusty. But Dunkley has an ability to hurt you more over the season than Dusty. Well, depending, potentially. But depending. Here's, best here's, case. We're talking best case. Here's, here's why Dustin probably hurts you more. Dustin's in 38% of sides right now. Ooh, That's uh, huge. Dunkley's 27? Yeah. So you've, there's a much, much higher chance that Dusty hurts you just based on ownership percentage because not having him could really hurt that's a week a, when he that's goes a, big. That's a lot. It's a huge amount. Mm. And Are you banking against him then? Well, I'd love to know. I said, what, what I'd love to know is like how many percentage of the top 10% is that? So of the top 10% of super coach players, like the generally getting the top 10%, how many of those guys are running Dusty? Or is Dusty that's just valid. a casual selection? Yeah. It, well, it would easily be a casual. That's what I mean. People come in, they're not used to playing. They see Dusty and Danger up there. They don't even know Danger's injured. He's probably in 50% of sides. Yeah. And they just throw the people they know at the top of the list and going, wonderful. Well, I am looking at Dustin as a guy I upgrade to in round 14. So he gets me through that last buy. He's, I have him for the rest of the season and he generally goes huge in the back end of seasons. So they have the middle buy, do they? They do. Yeah. So it's someone that I'm, I'm looking at now, you know, I look at the players like that and I go, okay, well, how can they most help my side? And I definitely need someone from those middle buys that's going to be able to take my forward line because of what I'm running. Um, So he's the one. So it's probably going to be someone like a, uh, Danaher or a Zeeble, they go bang straight to Martin in round 14. So Martin and Dunkley are your upgrade targets then? Yeah. Both uh, have the same buy? Yeah, uh, I don't necessarily... I, As in depending... Maybe Dunkley. At that, at that point though, you will know if you need Dunkley at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. At, at, Dunkley is such an odd one and we'll probably get through it more on the Western Bulldogs pod, but I, I just haven't seen it yet. People are jumping all over him like, oh my God, he's available as a forward. I'm like, I don't know what his role is going to be. I got no idea. I don't, I want to, I'm not spending 550k on someone I literally don't know what their role is. That's just that's madness to me right now. Madness. Madness. Um, at least when he, the other year, I think what was he a 92 average, and if you took a risk there, that worked out. Yeah, but of it's course. A cheap, it's a cheaper risk. You're paying, you know, at 100 average for a guy that might actually get you 95. I, I don't hate the Dunkley pick. It's it's a risk reward, and these are the why. I know it's not that pod, but. We throw up Dusty with two similar kind of players because you need to understand the reasons you're going there. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, if you just have a look at um, the way Dustin Martin scores his points and when he scores his points, he generally goes a little bit lighter at the start of the year and comes home really strong. So that's just another consideration. Very much like Danger in how he goes about it. I'm not sure if that's by design. It could be literally they just gear him up for finals. They try and get him through the early part of the season. Yeah, or, or that just could be how it. Yeah. Well, what's the point in banging off going a hundred percent to start the year when you know you're playing finals? You know you need to get cherry ripe, and it doesn't matter if you're not feeling it to start with. You can kind of have that luxury to ease your way in back half of the year. It's like right time to get serious. We're now getting closer to finals. I need to really up my game, up my energy and intensity, and start showing people like we mean business. Like shit just got real. Yeah, absolutely. I, I th- they're, and they're all valid considerations. Again, not saying that Dusty's a bad pick. I really like the pick. I think it's... I If I had to go one, two, three, Dusty, Steel, and Dunkley, he's the one for me. Steel? Um, side bottom. Oh, right. Sorry. Yep, sorry. Um, if I throw Marshall in there, Marshall gets the edge for me because of the ruck back up. Right. So Marshall then... Dusty is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, for me, yeah. But okay. I mean, everyone's different with their side um, and how they're setting up. I find the value of having someone being able to jump into that ruck uh, and potentially save you a trade. Yes. And or, or save a donut. your points. Yep. Yeah, exactly right. I, I find that is that that extra dur- um, flexibility yep. is really valuable to me. Yeah, I agree. Very valuable. Marshall has pretty much been in my side the whole time without leaving for that simple fact. And if I'm running Max, uh, Max Gorn... Could, you know he's going to miss a game. Well, he could miss he a game. He just always misses one, maybe two games. Yep, so that yeah. kind of gives you a little bit of coverage for that, and that's the risk you take there. So 
Interesting. That was a, definitely a long talk on Dustin Martin. Let us know. Give us a comment and a share. That's what you're thinking with Dusty. Are you starting him? Are you thinking of upgrading him? Uh, do you think he's going up? And that is pretty much all the scope we have with that one. So next one is we'll move on to other premiums that, that you know, basically we're now into draft relevancy. Chris? Yeah. yeah. Um, look, there, there's a couple there's, around. There's but two that I like. Like short? Mm, so I like short um, and I like Prestia. I am questionable on Bolton, but I can see why the appeal is there. Um, I just want to have a look quickly at stats for our Ford short without Hooli. So Okay, I've got it here. Ah, okay uh, then. Okay, Don't so, well, geez, what do you think I do in my spare time, Chris? <laughs> Everyone knows. Now, so, okay, short had 700s. He had a 114, 118, 125, 126. A low of 75, which not many people know. He is very serviceable, very is that consistent. His height? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 what a wow. Oh, Chris. Um, You're welcome. You're okay. welcome. So very reliable. Now, he actually averaged you 8.7 points more in 2020 without Hooli. Yep. And he averaged 9.2 points more in 2018 without Hooli. So it really does depend on his role. And right now he's injured, but he is a key cog to their wheel. So, um, yeah, I'd, that's why I'm like, oh, he's got potential. I yep. love him in draft. Well, I think when Hooli came back in, the role was his Yeah, when that, that point came. And I think they need to now look at that future. Hooli has pulled calves left, right, and center. Even preseason last year, you know, calf, nickel, calf, nickel, gets into the grand final, blows his calf, keeps playing. So that can't even be good in the longevity in the long run. He completely tore himself to shreds, and it was the grand final. He played through it. Yeah, well, good on him for so, that. Yeah, oh, for played, sure. Bro- like, played good too. Good on him, but how's your calf going to handle that coming back? Well, that, That's hard, man. Like for, for They'll him. take it easy on him this year. And they've got, you know, obviously a ready-made replacement in Jaden Short. Um, what's he averaging this year? I'm saying even if he gets a little bit of a bump. Now, we've got to remember we've got to take a little bit out for the fact that um, for his role last year and accumulations, etc., I reckon Max, he could average 100, which makes him a top 10 forward easily. Defender. Me- yeah, uh, sorry, defender. Um, the- can you can you rely on Jaden Short? No. No. I- you, he, he's someone that you, if he averaged you 100, you'd be like, yeah, that's about right. He's a good player, consistent. He has the role. He's not going to hurt you, though. He's not going to go bigger than that, right? Like, surely but- not. Are you going to go to the bank and put money on him to average 100? No, he could easily average you 88 to 100 and anywhere in between, depending on any given year. Well, at his price, is 520K. That's the same as Luke McDonald. Oh, he's actually more expensive than he Luke is. McDonald. Yep. And I, d- I just personally feel like the ceiling for Luke McDonald is much higher. I agree. So, I don't know. if you, I don't, in, you it, You're not running both, right? Like, you can't no. run two with that. No, and in draft leagues, 100% McDonald is going ahead of short. Hopefully not. He will. <laughs> no, he will, but But if he's not, not, if Luke McDonald's there and you can get him as your D three or something like that, D two, you'd be you'd be pretty stoked. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Um Prestia, four forty six K. Next one we'll go on to average ninety two point four in twenty twenty. He did go one oh three uh one oh one point three in twenty nineteen. Now in that year. Yes, the recap back end. Twenty nineteen, the back end of that year he averaged one twelve over the last eleven rounds, including four one twenties. Yep. So he is someone who is highly underrated. This is a this is a guy that at his price point, you, you're looking at Cunnington, you're looking at him, and you're looking at uh, Taranto. I would be. Oh, let's see, Taranto and Prestia heads to head for me. So here's the thing: um, Taranto role issues, Dion Prestia body issues, Cunnington everything. Uh, body issues, not really role. Body and oh, yeah, no role issues. The time but on body. ground issues, yeah, yeah. Um, they've all got question marks. Who's going to win? Oh, it's, it's, a th- it's a three-legged... Put your one, two, three there, mate. It's a three-legged race, Chris. Uh, so now, here's Put the benefit. Put your 50K on it and go to Rail. <laughs> Pretty much. Again, it went, when in doubt, go to Rail. Yeah, I like it. Much better idea. We should... Can we bless him? Hashtag blessed. Let's, let's bless let's Rail. bless a little... I love a little Richmond podcast talk about Matt Rail. I uh, know. Every, everything's coming it's to so Rail. Sexy. You know how hyped he is. He's like... <laughs> Yeah, Gary Ablett, when he came out, everyone just starts talking about him, except he's this, this little known, little ranger boy wearing his, you know, triple layered shirts under shirts and on his sunscreen. Zinc across and his his zinc. Face. Oh, mate, and tucked in <laughs> shirts. He's he's bringing class back, boys. Someone you take home to mum, right? Am I, am I right or am I right? Yeah, someone you would. You're welcome. 
Um, so let's just quickly round out. So Prest, you know, that this is the little fun fact, and this is why he's a smoky in draft leagues, and I would be extremely keen on him this year. He's finally having an uninterrupted preseason. Yeah. I like him in, even in standard. I've had him in my standard team a little bit. When I, Again, when I wanted to extend my out to an M6, I've looked at him quite a bit. Uh, it would not surprise me if he actually went like 105 plus to one. He could, if he, every, if he puts yeah. everything together, he yep. could go 105 to 110 and I would not be extremely surprised. No, neither would I. Um, and again, he's he's the, uh, one of the only guys in that entire Richmond list that you can be like, yeah, Presti is a midfielder and that's all he does. And there's upside. Yeah. Yep. Like he's the he's the only one that, like, he's not going to go rest forward. He's if, if he's on the field, he's playing in the guts. That's all he does. Yeah. Um, He's just got to get his body right. If he can get his body right for 22 games, he could be a jet. I just don't know it's there. Well, see, he had issues previously with, what was it, his knee or he had something going on where he oh, was it's only... it's always ankle or something, yeah. Well, yeah, I think knee, ankle was 2020, but before that, he was only training like once a week and playing. Yeah, he wasn't Coast, his, yeah. He, he wasn't able, even when he got to Richmond. Oh, yeah, yeah, first season, yeah. Right, yep. so if he's actually at that point now where he can train mul- multiple times a week without things flaring up, etc., first preseason in a while, uninterrupted, mm-hmm. and apparently he's come back um, in fine fettle. He, in, indeed. Fit as a fiddle. Now, I think that's pretty much the premiums. Uh, outside of that, I mean, as I said, Shea Bolton, people are interested in him. He, he had some cracker games last season. Yep. 15 games, average 86.1. He's a forward mid. And uh, look, he's spoken about because he, he averaged 90 the last 10 rounds. Yep. But he averaged 77 the first five. So the interesting thing is that there was no Prestia as well in 2020, not much of. Prestia only played, what, six games? Mm-hmm. Uh, five games, actually. So And Edwards only played six games. So there was definitely room to experiment. And he was one that really did rise up in the challenge. But now it's going to be, well, I see him playing as a lot more forward in 2021 with pinch hits in that... If they don't have injuries, he's not getting that mid-time. In that mid-time, yeah. Well, but yeah, because you, you look at that. Edwards was gone. Presti was gone. So I think Bolton, even though he was dynamic and looked really good, I think he'll be forward more. He probably maybe even mixes up with um, what, Dusty in that sort of I rotation agree. mix because they're a similar kind of X factor in that midfield. The problem is you're picking him to be a top 10 forward, right? And at 460K, like that's the only option. Uh, it's, I think it's hugely risky. There's not really enough of a reason for him to have another breakout. He's, that's, he's just had his breakout to 86. Can he go more? I reckon maximum 90, absolute maximum, which means you can't pick him. There's, there's no point in picking him. You, you may as well, if you're going to spend that sort of money, you may as well go to Dugowie or something like that oh. like with a huge upside. I was even saying um, Port Adelaide, you should be going with... Rosie, yep. Ro- Rosie, ninety. Or, or, well, but save Butters yourself. is almost the same price. Well, save yourself ninety thousand and go Rosie, and he will average you more. Or so. you know, um, Heaney looks like he's coming back. Uh, you know, he's he's obviously coming back from an injury at the moment, and he's not. I think he's in match sim, but he's not a hundred percent. So they're just working him back. Yep, he looked good in some of that match sim though. He, he did. He's pretty much spun on a dime, picked it up, and handballed it in one motion, and looked like a freak. That's uh, classic, I do, classic I do like him. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so rounding out though, Nan Curvis in that ruck, he played seven games at an 82.4 average. Now Just he, too expensive. Well, he averaged, oh yeah, for standard. Now we're going draft relevance. There's yep. no more standard here. Uh, 62.8 average with Soldo and average 108.7 without. So he is draft value 100%. You can pick him up late. Obviously, 82 sort of average. You'll be able to get him as your ruck with no issues and mm-hmm. he should average you high 90s if anything. Yep. Um, I agree. Next one is, I think, Trent Cotchen's a little bit over the hill. He's only averaged here like 80 flat the last couple of years. Uh, does the job, though. He's 31 this year, so he's not too old, but old enough. He had 390s, 300s. He also had lows of 33, 50, 63, 67. Played 24 out of 39 the last two years. So I'm not overly excited with Cotchen, which is why I think he might actually end up being a little bit more of a role player at some point, whether it's this year or soon. Makes sense. I think that's the transition you kind of have to make there. Vlosten, uh, another interesting one, averaging 90 this year, 91.2 in 2019. I actually, I'm actually starting to take note now of people that got really big knockouts. So he got knocked out in the grand final massively by Dangerfield. So if he got another hit at the start of this year, surely there would be even more considerations and, and cautiousness. Yep. Same as... Um, well, they, they, they miss a guaranteed one. Well, they game, do, but so. as in I'm looking at people who have been knocked out recently. Yeah. And in a bad way. So for me, it was like... Um, 
Ro- uh, not Rosie. Um, Chris Dur- Dersma. <laughs> Dersma, Chris Main, well, I'm um, more relevant people. So, <laughs> Vlosten and Dersma got knocked out. You're massively. saying Chris Main's not relevant. Who are you? Uh, <laughs> a non Collingwood supporter. Um, but yeah, they got knocked out in a big way. So, these are people I'm just starting to keep an eye on for draft, even those who have copped a real. And we're talking not a little knock or a little knockout. We're talking, you know, massively clonked. So, yeah. Um, Hulu we spoke about again, so interrupted preseason, blown his calf, 33 years old, constant calf issues, avoid at all costs. Uh, Edwards uh, only played six games, but two hundreds, including a 111 and a 119. He's 33 in 2021 and very, very, very role-reliant. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, even guys like Kane Lambert, you know, they can they can pump out some decent scores, but only averaged 80. I mean, these are all guys who are just going to round out your, your forward line or your defense line or your, your, on your bench in midfield, etc. Yep. Now, avoid Jack Graham in draft leagues. He played 12 games at an 83.1 average. Looks good. You get to that last kind of bench option. You see Graham, 83 average, and he looks kind of looks kind of nice there, Chris. But he averaged 63 with Prestia and 89.8 without. Yep. A- average 70.5 with Edwards and average 89.4 without Edwards. So you kind of look at those games and think, for it's me... It's role, obviously. It's yeah. role. And, and for me, I, I do like Graham, but he's not going to be one to set the world alight and avoid him in draft leagues, guys. Pretty much. Um, obviously, the two big forwards, uh, Lynch and Rewalt, guys that you can pick up because they can win you a game, but that's about it. Like, Lynch, Don't expect a lot. Lynch should be doing a lot better. He should. He's right. actually cheaper this year than he was last year. I can't believe it. Well, forwards got screwed last year. Yeah. He is, uh, fully enough. Can you see him averaging you know, in the 85 to 90 category again? Or? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get 85, 90, but in draft leagues, you could pick, pick him up on your bench easily. I think he could average you 80 plus. I think the... Curse of the forwards is gone. I think that he has to now start stepping up. I think Rewalt now needs to, you know, less will be put on him. He'll be that try and get up around the ground a little more or he might just not run as much and play forward pocket. I don't know. But Tom Lynch has to stand up at some point and he's been there now for a couple of years. He gets the goals at least. His body, so. yeah, but he needs to do more now. I think this is the time. I finally expect him to go back to 80+. plus. He did have some great uh, highs. He got another 109 and a 113, so he can always go big. But 2020 had lows of 30, 35, 42, 55, 58, and 61. But that was the forward curse. So I actually flag him as value in draft leagues. I'm not going there in standard. Yeah, fair call. I, I, there's just better options. And I think last one we're kind of watching out just to finish us up here. So Liam Baker, we spoke about a little bit. Average 78. Average 82 in the last nine rounds. He had nine more SC without Hooley. So someone who could actually start quite well. And you could trade him off at a premium. So he's someone that I would be not too upset with to have him in my defensive side as my D5 or obviously you'd rather him on your bench to give you some flexibility, Chris. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I actually had Liam Baker in um, a few drafts last year and he went all right for me. So not too bad. And this wouldn't be a Richmond podcast without saying, fuck you, Caddy. <laughs> You're not even best 22 anymore, Caddy. Yes, F caddy, but he did. He was injured on uh, round seven on eighteen. Super coach injured round eighteen on fifty nine. His true average is actually more like seventy point three. So there is some value there, and who knows what's happening with Stack at this point in time? Um, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see. How yeah, it, wait and see on Stack. See how it all unfolds. We'll wait and see how it stacks up. <laughs> and look, that's it, guys. Nice and quick, nice and simple on the Richmond front. So again. Uh, more draft relevance than anything. So thank you for tuning in and um, let us know your thoughts. Catch you next time. Alrighty. Bye. Bye-bye.